My name is Jason, and this is just Blotches. Okay, today we have something from the top of the line from Orient Star. I believe this is their most expensive watch. Now, I was very lucky to get this used for about half of MSRP using a Japanese auction proxy service. I had been looking for a skeletonized watch for a while, and this one ticked a lot of boxes. Now, before we get into the review, if you are enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. This watch is currently available from a number of retailers, including the Orient Watch USA website. The MSRP on that website is $2,995. The case is 39 millimeters in diameter by 46 millimeters lug to lug. It's only 11 millimeters thick and then has a 20 millimeter lug width opening. On the stock bracelet, it weighs in at 122 grams. And the case is quite simple with angular lugs that curve down slightly. There's a wide, high polished chamfered edge along the top of the mid case. The rest of the case is brushed and then a high polished bezel sits atop the mid case. This case is very sleek and appears even thinner than its 11 millimeter spec. It is incredibly comfortable on the stock bracelet. I really like this case and I think it serves as a great backdrop for the dial and the visible movement. The bracelet starts at 20 millimeters before tapering down to 18 and then jumping back up to 20 at the clasp. There's a touch of play in the solid end links, but the articulation of the bracelet against the back of the watch and between the links is excellent, two factors that help with the overall comfort of the bracelet. The age links have a lot going on with high polish on the edges and then facets of the intermediary links also brought to a high polish finish. And then additionally, we have high polish sections on the interior links. The remaining surfaces are brushed. The clasp is very basic, I think especially for this price point. It's a double push deployment with a very basic Orient Star branding, high polish facets, and then three micro positions. The scissor is fully milled and the action is solid. So while the clasp is a bit underwhelming at this price point, overall the bracelet is incredibly comfortable. That's due in large part to that excellent articulation, plus the H-link design that really makes this bracelet melt into your wrist. Then sizing is accomplished with the dreaded pin and collar system. Now this watch also came with a leather strap on a deployant clasp. This is a nice alternative to the bracelet, but honestly the bracelet is so comfortable I haven't even bothered switching it out yet. The screw and case back has an exhibition window that gives a fantastic view of this stunning gunmetal gray movement. As this watch is hand wind only, there's no rotor to block your view, and there is actually a Cote de Genève finish applied to the entire back plate. You will also notice every edge of this plate has been beveled and brought up to a high polish. We have Orient Star engraved in gold, and then we have a splash of blue and gold from the train of wheels and the balance wheel. You can also see the purplish blue escapement as well. This watch is powered by Orient Star's F8B61. However, this one has been upgraded with a silicon escape wheel developed by Epson, which is Orient's parent company. And from what I've read, this escape wheel is partially responsible for how they got this watch up to a 70 hour power reserve. It's also a beautiful shade of purplish blue. So this is a hacking hand winding only 21,600 vibration per hour movement with a power reserve of 70 hours and a stated accuracy of plus 15 to minus five seconds a day. And you can see on the time grapher here, it is running in spec about plus 12 to plus 13 seconds a day in the dial up position and plus seven to plus eight seconds with the crown up. Now I think at this price point, they really should be dialing this watch in closer to cost score minus four to plus six seconds per day. The 6.5 millimeter push-pull crown is signed and knurled, but it's quite basic and what you might find on a three to four hundred dollar Orient Star watch. Now being a hand wind only watch, the crown is really important since you'll be interacting with it regularly. I think this crown is just okay. It is wide enough in profile that you can get decent purchase to do the hand winding, but I'd actually prefer if it was a touch bigger in diameter and maybe profile as well just to make it easier to wind this watch. That said, I know large crowns can throw off the look of the watch for some people and it isn't difficult to wind the watch with the crown at its current size. Finally, I will say the hand winding action, which I also think is very important on a hand wind only watch, is incredibly smooth, which I think is a high sign of quality, although I prefer it was if it was actually more tactile because I love that tactile feedback when winding up a watch.
The domed sapphire crystal rises in plane with the angle of the bezel. Now, Orient must have the same magical formulation of anti-reflective coating as Seiko does, because from many angles, this crystal basically entirely vanishes. Now, I don't know why they don't use this application of AR more often, because it's really stunning in person, but I'm thrilled they used it on this watch, because this is a perfect watch to use it on to really soak in and appreciate all the details and finishing on the hands, dial, and movement without any additional reflections from the crystal. Now, while I was slightly disappointed by a few other elements of the watch, the dial, or really lack thereof, and the movement of this watch are staggeringly well finished. Let's start at the chapter ring. We have dashes for each of the minutes with larger dashes for the hours. And then moving in, we have a ring where the applied hour indices reside with a Roman 12 to help orient the watch. These indices use the same trick I've seen on Grand Seiko, where the top surface is made up of very fine parallel ridges that will actually refract light and cause a rainbow effect in certain lighting conditions. Now high polish facets angle away from this top surface and also catch light nicely. Next we have Orient Star, the power reserve, and the small second track screwed into the main plate of the movement. These are dark gray plates and they complement the gunmetal gray of the movement. Below this we have the main plate of the movement which is fully perlaged, but the high level finishing doesn't stop there. All the edges of this plate have been beveled and brought up to a high polish. Below this we can see into the depths of the movement, most notably the silicon escape with its purplish blue hue and then the balance wheel, but many other internal components are also visible. All of this adds up to a dial with a dizzying amount of detail that catches light on a wide variety of surfaces. Now legibility is basically only be possible because of the choice of blue hands, but oftentimes the eye is drawn to the running of the movement or the perlage finish playing with the light or other details you may notice and you can forget that the primary function of this watch is to tell the time. I actually lamented about the difficult legibility to a watch group I'm in and they reminded me that you don't buy a fully skeletonized watch to easily tell the time. The four hands on this watch are a stunning electric blue. I do not know how this effect was created. I don't think it's heat treated because the metal seems a different shade from what I've usually seen from heat treated blue. However, the hour and minute hands are brushed along the top with high polish facets angling away. The minute hand is exceptionally long and reaches to the chapter ring with a slight curve at the tip. The power reserve and second hands are simple and flat hands but finished in that same electric blue. Now these hands are wild and almost seem to glow in certain lighting conditions. I love the choice of the blue hands but even with this contrasting color it's not always easy to read the time on this watch depending on the lighting conditions and then obviously there's no loom here so so you're also not able to read it at night. So here it is on my six and three quarters inch wrist. I think 39 millimeters by 46 millimeters lug to lug is definitely a sweet spot. And I think this is the perfect size for this type of watch. I think if it was larger, it would look a bit garish, at least on my wrist. And as you can see, it also wears flat and comfortably against the wrist. So pros and cons, starting with the pros. First, the finishing on this movement is incredible. We have perlage, high polish bevels, Geneva striping, Every surface of the movement hands and indices are just finished to an incredible degree. Second, the crystal is almost invisible due to this anti-reflective treatment and it allows a stunning view of the details of the watch. Third, I love the combination of the stainless steel, the gunmetal gray movement, and then those blue hands. It's a striking and unique combination. Last, it's incredibly comfortable on the stock bracelet. As for cons, first, this watch is the very upper end of what Orient Star offers, and I think they did use some parts from the rest of their line, especially with the crown and the clasp. They don't really have that luxury feel that matches up with the rest of the watch. Second, while the details of this watch are gorgeous, I feel like there are almost too many high reflective elements. In very bright or direct sunlight, it becomes almost impossible to read this watch from certain angles. I could also live with a few less reflective surfaces on the bracelet, leaving it more brushed than high polish overall. Last, the accuracy is just unacceptable at this price point. If Steinhardt can give you a watch that runs cost for four to five hundred dollars, Morningstar needs to do it here if they want to justify this high price point. 
For comparables, I'd also consider the Raymond of a Freelancer Skeleton, which is about the same price. However, please note it's 42 millimeters, so it's a very different size watch than this one at 39 millimeters. For less, you could consider the Multifort Skeleton Vertigo. This is a watch from a solid Swiss brand and also has a very well decorated skeletonized movement. Finally, on the affordable end, Fossil actually has quite a few skeletonized offerings for between $100 and $200. I think the skeletonized diver in particular looks pretty cool. So there you have it, the Orient Star Contemporary Skeleton. What do you think about this watch? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you're enjoying the contents of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason, and you've been watching Just Watches.